So we can now place or apply borders to our paragraphs if we have the need to. So in order to do that, we have a, uh, a button within our home tab that allows us to add um, borders around our paragraphs. And this is found in the paragraph group and in the home tab. So you can also change the style by clicking the drop down arrow. And most of the time there will be predefined arrow or border styles that you can apply. And then for additional options, we are going to click the borders and shading option in the border menu to get our border tab of the borders and shading dialog box. So you can choose a number of border colors and styles in this dialog box, or you can remove a border completely. So let's go through an exercise on how we can go about placing uh, borders around our paragraphs. So we are going to use our document that is open from our previous exercise. So yesterday, I believe we ended on shading paragraphs and we also highlighted the differences between shading a paragraph and highlighting characters. So we are going to put our insertion point in the second paragraph and then in the home tab in the paragraph group, we are going to click the drop down arrow next to the border command or button. And you should be able to see the image that you see on the screen. So once we've set our borders, we should be able to see our second paragraph given a border. So let's quickly open up that document and apply it. Let's see if I can open it from our previously opened. Files, so I believe we were working on this one. And this should have been the one that group B was working on. So we've highlighted and shaded our first paragraph. So let's quickly change our alignment to justification first. And then we were asked to place the cursor or the insertion point at the beginning of this paragraph that starts with, I also understand the employee handbook. So going back to PowerPoint, this is where we are putting our insertion point just before these words. And then we are going to click our border button. So in the paragraph tab, we have the border button or the border command. And this drop down arrow is the one that allows us to add our borders. So I will select outside borders. So do not select that one. Outside borders. And then we have our paragraph uh, enclosed in a page border. Now we also, do we have other commands? Yes, so once you do that, you should be able to see the image that we've just seen here. So moving forward, we are now going to place the CESA or the insertion point in the third paragraph. And in the design tab, we are going to go to the page background group to click uh, page borders. So we're going to go back to our file. Let's change the alignment to justification. So here we are now going to, I think it's the design tab. Yes, we're going to click the design tab and in the page background group, we're going to click page borders. And then we are going to click the borders tab. So here we've clicked our design tab and then we're going to look for the page borders, page background group, which is here. So the page background is what we are looking for. And then when we click that button, you should see the page, the borders and shading dialog box show up. So this is what we want. So after that, we are going to click the borders tab to make it active as seen below. So we are going to make sure that we have the borders tab. So right now the one that's active is page border. The one we want is the borders tab, this one. So make sure you are here and not there. And you see that when you move from one tab to the other, the options slightly change. 
So one thing that you note is when I click the page border, what you are seeing here is a preview of your entire document. And the reason why I know that it's a document is typically the information that is found within this application drop down menu. So when I click this, it tells me that I can apply this to a whole page, a section, the first page only, and so on. When I click the borders tab, not it immediately changes, although this graphic is still the same, but your drop down menu options change. We only have paragraph and we are learning about formatting paragraphs at the moment, not your entire page. So this is how we navigate between the two and differentiate which borders we are applying because you can apply a border to a page and also a paragraph. So if I choose this one, this will be a whole document, but what I want is that one. So we move on to our next instruction. Step number six says, select shadow under settings. So we go back here, shadow under settings. So we have settings, there is none border. So shadow is the one we are picking. So that shadow picked and then seven is select the ninth option under style, select dark blue, text to color for color, and then change the width to two point and a quarter, or rather two fourths. So we are going to style, is it the ninth option? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's our ninth option. And then we've been asked to change the width as well and change the width to two point that and dark blue for the color. So we have got color. So, and we've got accent to choose from. So blue, anyway, let's just assume this is our dark blue too. And then the width is two and a quarter. That's how you change it. And then in the preview we area, you can see what changes will be applied. And then after that, we're going to click okay. And then we'll note that the page borders have been applied to our paragraphs. So we go back to our document. This is what a preview will look like. And then we say, okay. And we have borders applied accordingly to our paragraph. So we're going to save our file and then leave it open to be used in our next exercise. So we then go through the next steps to place a border around your text. So we are going to use the document that's open from our previous exercise. And in the home tab, we are going to enable our non-printing characters by clicking the non-printing symbol. So that's step number one. And then for step number two, in the home tab and in the paragraph group, click the drop down arrow next to the border button to display the menu and select borders and shading to open the dialogue box. So before we move any further, let's do all those steps. So currently we are in the design tab. We need to navigate back to our home tab, which is here. Then within the home tab, I'm going to look for our borders drop down menu and then from here we've been asked to select borders and shading i believe to open up your dialog box so those are steps number one and two done step number three is click the borders tab to make it active notice the title appears in the preview area and apply the section to text button is displayed, not selecting the printing character will allow you to place a border around text only. Honest, can you stop annotating the screen? So we haven't displayed our non-printing character, so we probably won't see this option. So we need to ensure that we display our non-printing characters first, so which is there. And then finally, this one. 
Okay. I think so, yes. So select box under setting and change the width to one and a half and then click okay. So we should notice that the border now wraps around our text. So let's see if we, so we are now going to see box. We only see paragraph, but we have one and a half. Where is my mouse being highlighted now? Where did I put my mouse? So what basically we've done is just change the border style for our paragraph. So removing borders around a text or a paragraph. So these are your steps. So I'll quickly go through them and then we shall do them together. So we are going to use the same document open from our previous exercise. In the home tab and in the paragraph group, we are going to click the arrow next to our border button, go to the borders and shading dialog box. And then in the borders tab, we are going to select none under setting. And then we are going to remove the border on the third paragraph and repeat the steps for the other one that we have selected and then we are going to save our document as b and b with no borders so let's quickly go through this to remove our borders so we place our case and i can disable our non-printing characters so here at the top where we have our borders button we go to the borders and shading at the bottom to get this dialog box showing if you open up in the page border, just click and navigate to borders. And then under settings, we are going to select none. And you should be able to see a preview that actually your borders have been removed. And then when you click OK, your border should disappear. And you repeat the same steps for the next uh, paragraph with borders. So we select none again. And you should see that we have nothing there. And then Okay, and your borders are removed. So that's one way of adding borders. Another way is if you simply highlight your paragraph, you can even decide which borders you want to apply. Sometimes you might not want all the outside borders to show. So let's say this time I just want the top border to show. So when I highlight my text, I only see a line at the top. If I want this portion of my paragraph to have a bottom line, I can then choose the one that has a bottom border and then it applies the bottom border here. So if I can also select this uh, paragraph and apply one to my left and the border is applied to the left, okay? You can also use the draw table to start drawing which parts of the borders you want to maintain and keep. Why isn't it? This should allow you to add or draw your borders. That's if you have an actual table. So when you start drawing, depending on where you are, sure that you draw very nicely. And you should have borders appearing here. So if I apply that, you can draw borders and then add text in your document. So this is how you typically navigate borders in your file. Any questions on borders and applying them to paragraphs? This is very discouraging. Only 31 students from 200 are attending online classes. Love more, your hand is still up. Do you have a question? All right, we move on to our think step exercise that we can do before calling it a day. So we, Another thing that you can do in terms of formatting your paragraphs is setting line spacing in text in between the paragraphs. This one is a very, very um, 
nice feature that you can use, especially when you are formatting your documents and you want your document to appear in a certain way, or you're trying to fit as much content as possible in your document and you do not want to have a lot of white spaces. So you can determine how much space separates the line of text and also set the spacing between paragraphs. By default, Word sets line spacing to 1.15, but you can reduce this or increase this by customizing your size. Spacing uh, for paragraphs will affect uh, space below and above paragraphs, and it is set to eight points after each paragraph by default. The higher the point size, the greater the space between the paragraphs, but you can also customize this. So line spacing is the amount of space between the lines of text in a paragraph. Uh, in a paragraph, line spacing options are available in the home tab and in the page layout tabs within the paragraphs group by using the line and spacing bar. The line spacing options can also be accessed through the indent and spacing tab of our dialog box. So these are a summary of line spacing options that you have and what they mean. So you can quickly go through these and see what they mean. But let's quickly look at this step-by-step -step exercise before we close. So we are going to use the same file that was open from our previous lesson. And then we are going to place the insertion point at the beginning of the first paragraph under the acknowledgement heading. And in the home tab, we are going to look and click the line and spacing paragraph button as shown below. And then we are going to select two as our spacing 2.0. Navigate to our top. We are going to navigate to our first paragraph under acknowledgement. This mic is open. Leshe Christy. Can you mute your mic? Yes, so we put our case under acknowledgements. And then from here, we go to our line and paragraph spacing button. Currently, it has been set to 1.0. And then when you hover over each of these options, you see that your paragraph spacing also changes to that length. So if we select or hover over 1.15, your text in the paragraph also starts to uh, space out with a degree of 1.15. Typically, the one that is used for uh, assignments of most documents is 1.5. But if you want to fit as much content as you can, you would use a smaller one. Now, the reason why you typically use a an amount such as 1.15 or 1.5 is so that when people are reading through your documents, they have enough room for eye movement to move from one line to another. You do not want a scenario when someone is reading your document and they keep reading the same line over and over again because they can't navigate from, let's say they are reading this line and the eyes reach at the end but they're trying to pick up whether they should start this line or not. So this is why you would use a good and agreeable amount of line spacing. So the one picked here is two. And when it's a two, you can see that navigating from one line to the other is slightly better. But of course, this will depend on the requirements and the kind of document you are working on. So that's one way of changing line spacing in your document. So instruction number four is place the insertion point in the second paragraph. In the paragraph group, launch the dialog box. And in the space group, we are going to set and select our double line spacing. So in this case, we're looking at our second paragraph, which is here. We're going to launch our paragraph dialog box. And in this case, uh, Robert, what is going on? Robert, is there something you want to share with the class? Uh, 
sorry, my my phone is malfunctioning. Oh, okay. Please, whenever you're attending class, do not try to annotate anything on the screen because it's distracting for others. So in the indents and spacing tab, once this dialog box is opened, we are now focusing on spacing here. So under spacing, we have another uh, section where we can select which kind of spacing that we want. So the one that we are supposed to change to is double. And you even see a preview of what happens when you select that option. And when you click OK, you have double spacing applied to that paragraph. And then we are going to move our insertion point to the third paragraph and then press control two to double space it. So our third paragraph, which is here and on my keyboard, I'm going to uh, select control and two and it will also achieve the same thing. Now I'm wondering how we've navigated from instruction eight to three, but anyway, we are going to click the design tab in the document and we're going to click the paragraph spacing button to show this menu, which also does, sorry, almost the exact same thing. So under design, paragraph and spacing, which is found this side to your right, you should see some built-in paragraph formatting options. So if you want things to be compact, tight, open, relaxed, you have these options to choose from. And then we are going to save and end there for our lecture. So from now on, you will most likely find um, the video so all you do is simply watch group A's video and then you will find that will typically finish off this lecture. So I need to end this session so that I can start the one for group A. I'll share the link for group A. For those that are free and do not have any class, you are more than welcome to join group A as well.